Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, today we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at LibreOffice and how to make it more compatible with Microsoft Office. Welcome back to the show. I am Tom Morosky, an author and a technology consultant, and today we are going to look at LibreOffice once again, and uh, we're going to talk about LibreOffice and how it might relate to Microsoft Office if you need to do collaborations with different people, because unfortunately, Microsoft Office is still so widely used that many people think it's the only word processing application out there, which is sadly not the case. But if we want to use LibreOffice and then communicate with somebody else who's using Microsoft Office, you're going to need to share some documents around. And so what can we do? Today we're going to talk about some of the tips and some of the issues. As some people will say, you know, there's compatibility issues between the two, so you can't use them. So let's go ahead and talk about that. First and foremost, the problem is actually not on LibreOffice's side. There are entire document formatting standards that LibreOffice follows exactly. But Microsoft Office chooses to use its own default proprietary docx file format instead, and it always likes to tinker with it. So when somebody gets some code figured out to make it work more compatibly, they tweak something to make it not work compatibly because they want people to use Microsoft Office more. That sounds a little conspiracy-like, but you know what? The fact is, if you spend some time in the open source software world, that's the type of stuff that you find. Now, is Microsoft Office bad? No. It's just that LibreOffice is very good and in many ways better, and it has a much better price tag, especially as Microsoft is trying to pour, force people onto the annual subscription services, and I'd rather not have to pay for software that perfectly fine alternatives will work just as well. But I also don't spend any of my time trying to convince somebody to use other software if they don't want to. And so what do I do? And I collaborate with numerous other people, and some of them do not use FOSS software. And so I have to take a few extra steps to make sure that my documents are readable by the people that I am sending them to. So what are the things that, that you need to do? There are a couple of things that you need to consider. Now, why are there quote-unquote formatting problems? Well, the reason boils down to two issues. Number one is that Microsoft Office would really prefer you to use its, its own docx for, file format type. LibreOffice tends to want to prefer the open source standards that are freely understood and used widely outside of that. And so the first thing you want to do is you just want to go ahead and change your default file types, or if you don't want to change your default file types, and I personally don't, if I'm sending a document to somebody else, I just go ahead and save it as the docx file format. Now, under what circumstances might that not work? Might it not preserve some of the formatting? Well, if you're doing things that is extraordinarily rare, super duper advanced, and let's face it, most of us don't have that, that issue. And so the criticisms that it doesn't work right are not generally well supported. Now, the second issue is a bigger one, and that is related to the fonts. If you are using LibreOffice, by default, it wants to use free fonts as well. What you need to do, though, is make sure that somebody has the fonts that your document is written in. Because if you format a document a certain way, and then you send it on to somebody else to open up, if they do not have the exact fonts you're using, it's going to mess up the formatting. That is usually the root of what the issues are. Now, I will tell you this, formatting should be done after the editing. You should not be formatting a book, you should not be typesetting a book, and then sending that out to somebody for them to open up and edit. You wanna do the, the typesetting last. It doesn't take a lot of time, and you wanna make sure that everything is in place when you get to that step. Okay, but nevertheless, there are going to be some issues that you need to get around and fixing your fonts are going to do that. So what you're going to want to do is looking at the LibreOffice install across the three major platforms, those being Windows, Mac, and Linux, 
LibreOffice likes to use the Liberation Sans font and other free and open source fonts by default. But Microsoft Office, I'm um, not Office, but Windows itself and Mac do not generally have those unless LibreOffice is installed. All right, LibreOffice is installed, it'll have access to those fonts. But if you're sending this document to somebody who has Word instead of Libre, then they're not going to have those fonts. So what do you want to do? Well, looking at the fonts, the one font group that all of those systems are going to have are what are called the Microsoft Core fonts. Now, this is not what are generally referred to as the Vista fonts, which are the Calibri and some of the other fonts that are coming with the more modern Office so software as of, I think it was Office 2007, I think started shipping with a different version of fonts. Mac does not have those unless you've installed Microsoft Office on the Mac as well. So you'd be safe to use either of those, but those are a little bit harder fonts to install on Linux for you Linux users. Let me tell you though what you can do. Across, even without Microsoft Office, Windows and Mac both will have the core fonts. Linux, it's very easy to install the core fonts. So what I'm going to recommend you do is if you're going to be sharing documents, in addition to changing the document type to the docx, you also want to change the font to one of the Microsoft core fonts because those are freely available on all systems and on Windows and Mac, those fonts are already installed. On Linux, you Linux users out there, you'll know how to install the core fonts. If not, uh, it's, uh, I think it's MSS-TrueFonts, I think is this, the package on most Linux distributions. You can look it up. So what are those core fonts? Well, here they are. Uh, in Here are all of them. I'm going to recommend not using a couple, but here are all of them. Arial, Courier New, Comic Sans, Georgia, Impact, Times New Roman, Trebuchet, Verdana, and Webdings. Obviously, Webdings, no. You're not going to use that. That's not a font used for reading. It's a font for something else. The other one is please don't use Comic Sans. <sighs> Do I really have to say that? Hit like for Comic Sans. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> so pick one of the other ones. Um, Times New Roman's good. Ariel's good. Verdana's good. Georgia's good. Courier News good. Uh, Impact is a little hard to read, so I wouldn't use that one by default. Trebuchet? I, I don't know if I've ever actually looked at Trebuchet, but <laughs> I will look at it. Uh, but using one of those basic fonts, saving your document as a docx file before you send it on out to somebody that is only using Word, then that's actually going to work for you. So those are the very simple things you need to do. So how do you actually do this? Inside of, uh, inside of LibreOffice, what you're going to want to do is you need to go down to the Preferences. So inside of Windows and Linux, that is under Tools and Preferences, and on Mac, that is under your LibreOffice and Preferences. So once you are inside of there, it's the same in all cases. Go down to LibreWriter and to the Fonts tab, and you can change the default fonts to use one of those core type fonts. That way you don't forget about that and you're defaulting to a font that's going, going to be usable by anybody on whether they're on Windows or, or Mac if they're using Word. So you can go ahead and do that. And uh, don't worry about the fact that those may not be the fonts you want to use in your book. In fact, you probably don't want to use those fonts for your book. This is the pre-formatting stage. We can set our formatting later. All right. Now, the second thing you want to do is to save the document as you need to find the menu that says save as inside of the save as go down to the load save and then you have three bars. One of the, the top one there is selecting the type of document that we have. I actually think the top one is to what version of document you're using. Uh, so I just leave that on the default. The second one down is going to give you the list of the documents. So is it a text document, a spreadsheet, a presentation? And then when you select that from the list, in this case, we're looking at the text document for word compatibility. You want to go down and pull down the doc X if you want to save by default. The other thing you might want to do is you want to turn off the checkbox that says warn when not saving in ODF 
or default. What that's going to do is take that off and if you if you don't uncheck that, then anytime you attempt to save the file format as something else, it's actually going to throw an error at you. And so you don't want that to happen. It's not going to throw an error. It's going to throw a warning box at you. I don't like getting those warning boxes. If I manually went in to save as a different document type, clearly LibreOffice, I would like to save it as that document type. I don't need a warning. And so turning that guy off is something that you might want to do. So with those very two simple steps, change the document type, change the font, you will have maximum compatibility. It's, is it going to be 1,001%? No, but is it going to be enough that uh, you are gonna, not going to have any problems on most people, most users, most cases? Absolutely. In fact, of all the times that I've done this, I've had, you know, nobody has ever picked up the fact that I'm not actually using Microsoft Office, despite all my stuff is done in LibreOffice. So hopefully this tip helped you to get your LibreOffice install more compatible with Microsoft Office if you happen to need to use those. And I hope that we covered the Mac, the Windows and the Linux questions that you might have. Any other questions or comments, leave them in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already and like or dislike the video if you so please. And I hope that in this video we have helped you to get your writing done right.